Tomorrow marks 15 years since one of the country's most horrific crashes and what an impact it had on our community. This bus was carrying Bluffton University baseball players, young men who grew up in areas like Maumee, Ida and Brian. They were just beginning their lives, making plans for graduation when everything went dark. We crashed pretty early in the morning. The last thing I truly remember is, is hearing the bus driver scream. What's wrong with me? What, why am I here? What's going on? We went to the morgue and um, I identified David. The chartered bus was carrying the 2007 Bluffton baseball team, 28 players and five coaches on their way to Florida for spring training. Nine hours into the trip, the driver went up an Atlanta exit ramp and off a bridge, landing in the middle of I-75. It's surreal um, to think about how much life has changed in 15 years. The players are in their mid-30s now, many still struggling to make sense of why they lived. But their teammates, Cody Hope, Tyler Williams, Scott Harmon, Zach Aaron, and David Betts, had to die. I think about them often. Um, it's hard not to look at yourself and, and feel guilty. Greg Sig was 21 at the time of the crash. And this was the sweatshirt I was wearing on that night. Um, and I've kept it and I still wear it. And I fell, this is my right shoulder and all those little marks are glass cuts. He's now 36, a husband, father, and assistant principal at Clay High School, sometimes feeling guilty about surviving when good people had to die. It's been, over the last 15 years, something I've tried to become is living up to the best person I can be for myself, for my family, and for the students at this high school. I've always felt that God has a plan for me, and I hope that I'm doing my best to, to fulfill it. Why somebody next to you died, and why somebody that you lived, is a question that you don't need to answer other than live your life well. John Betts' son David was just 20 years old. His favorite saying, play like there's no tomorrow. He was sitting in this seat when he was killed. The Betts family, citing investigators, believes if seatbelts had been on the bus, everyone could have survived. The most difficult part is wondering what he would be doing um, and who we would have married, how many kids. I try not to dwell on what would he be doing because um, that becomes very sad. They worked with other families and legislators to pass the motor coach safety bill, requiring seat belts and other safety features on new buses. They also built the David Betts double play diamond in Bryan. Now 600 kids have the chance to play like there's no tomorrow, just like David. There were a lot of times I was angry, I was depressed, I was upset, I was angry at God. Tim Berta miraculously survived a traumatic brain injury, spending months learning to talk and walk again. I was 22 years old, eight weeks away from graduating with a biology degree, eight weeks. No, it's not, but it's also not fair that people have to die, and I, and I did. More than one doctor, doctor, has said, you shouldn't be here. Now 37, Tim continues to beat the odds, driving a car and living on his own, with hopes of a family someday. He is a coach and motivational speaker, visiting traumatic brain injury survivors in hospitals, offering hope and inspiration. If only I could fix it. I mean, yeah, people could pray for me, people could help me. I was the one who had to 
put in the physical effort and sweat to regain what I lost. How unfair is that? And I had nothing to do with it. But I had to do it. Only I could do it. I pretty much broke every bone in my face, <laughs> um, in my jaw, and then I uh, had a traumatic brain injury as well. James Grandy still coaches the Bluffton baseball team all these years later. He was just 29 at the time of the crash, not much older than the players he coached. It's still really hard because you don't know if you're doing enough or if you've done enough um, or if they know that you still care. All those things are uh, really challenging and then obviously in the moment um, you're responsible. Like, I was the leader of the trip. And the cleat prints are the actual cleats of the players that passed away. He visits the university's memorial almost every day and makes sure every recruit knows about the men who played on this diamond. Their spirit kept alive in how the game is played today. We talk about how, you know, baseball is a really important thing in all of our lives, but it's not the most important thing in all of our life. Um, but when you get a chance to, to go play, and whether it's practice or play a game or just do some extra work with a, with a teammate, how, how valuable that time is. Time is going on. Maybe one thing we can all take from this all these years later is the very thing David Betts practiced most. Play like there's no tomorrow. Wow. Just so moving and so still inspirational to the point where they are able to look back. I mean, 15 years. Yeah, they're all going to be getting together at the memorial tomorrow, so we'll bring you guys the coverage from that. But uh, very much still feeling they need to honor these um, five young men and, and one another.